Hello and welcome to another podcast by the Grand Piano Series in Naples, Florida. My name is Mark Travis. I'm a nationally syndicated writer and producer, and I also have an amazing day job as the Associate Director of Media in charge of production for the New York Philharmonic. On Tuesday, October 22nd, the fourth season of the Grand Piano Series kicked off with a recital by the young North American pianist Dominic Cayley. Mr. Cayley's program consisted of the piano sonatas numbers one through four by Beethoven. I certainly find opening up this cycle to be very exciting. The first four piano sonatas of Beethoven that I'll be playing are both adventurous, innovative, explorative type works that Beethoven wrote in his early 20s. He wrote these pieces sort of to prove himself as both a composer, as a virtuoso pianist, and also, more importantly, as a source of uh, sort of separating himself from all of his uh, peers, competitors, and even his mentors, such as Joseph Haydn. And over the course of the next two seasons, the Grand Piano Series will present all 32 of Beethoven's piano sonatas, and all will be performed and recorded on the signature instrument of this series, the 10-foot, 2-inch Fazioli F308. Support for the Grand Piano Series comes from the Brooks and Joanne Fortune Family Foundation. Dominic Cayley's recital was generously underwritten by Charles Marshall and Richard Took. The Grand Piano Series is committed to preserving a pinnacle of human artistic achievement and our common cultural heritage with the great piano literature. By facilitating performances, masterclasses, and lectures by pianists of the highest caliber, we aim to introduce this literature to audiences in Florida and beyond, as well as to deepen our shared musical understanding. More information is available when you visit us online, grandpianoseries.org. These sonatas really have this sort of laboratory type feeling where there's test tubes everywhere. Where he's experimenting with many different ideas. He experiments with silence quite a bit throughout these sonatas that he'll later use to great effect in his larger scale works in his late period. Beethoven's piano sonatas, which were composed over a 27 year period of time, represent one of the greatest achievements in the history of music. The great pianist and conductor Hans von Bülow called them the New Testament of piano music, and the great Beethoven scholar Charles Rosen says that they, quote, bridge between the worlds of the salon and the concert hall. These works are also the closest thing we have to a constant throughout Beethoven's life, as they are part of his earliest successes, as well as his late genius and legacy. Dominic Cayley's program consisted of the Sonatas Opus 2, Numbers 1 through 3, and the Grand Sonata, Opus 7. Well, the very first sonata in F minor, I actually, that was the first Beethoven sonata that I ever worked on. I worked on the first movement quite a bit when I was probably around the age of 11 or 12. I didn't particularly play it very well, but I could already tell that I loved the music. And I, I do remember playing uh, the F minor quite a bit. I auditioned with that particular piece for my first serious teacher named Zina Ilyashov in St. Louis. And we moved on from that sonata pretty quickly into other areas of music making. But that sonata always will have certain significance for me as being the first real Beethoven piece that I played for solo piano. The Opus 2 collection dates to a time when Beethoven was studying with Haydn. In fact, these works are dedicated to Haydn. But Beethoven doesn't acknowledge the older man as his teacher, as would have been customary at that time. In terms of structure, Beethoven breaks with tradition by adding a fourth movement to these pieces. He also indicates an unusual number of dynamic contrasts for the time, and often extreme accents, sometimes on weak beats. The first sonata is sometimes called the Little Appassionata, probably because it shares the same key signature of F minor as the later work, but also because it's a quite ferocious piece. Dominic Cayley tells us more. Beethoven really took the harmonic spectrum that was presented by Haydn and Mozart, and he took it and he pushed the boundaries even further. There are dissonances, there are chords that at first glance when you hear them, they sound so so terribly modern, so terribly dissonant, but then one note sneaks in and then everything makes sense. And Beethoven loves to write things that on the surface appear quite ugly, but then one little note colors it in a way that 
there's a tension of not knowing where this chord's gonna go and not, not knowing if the pianist played the right notes or not. But then that one note sneaks in and you're like, ah, he did play the right notes. And certainly Beethoven planned this from the beginning. This happens quite a bit in the F minor sonata. It's quite striking that Beethoven, in fact, chooses to write his first sonata in F minor because up until this time, you know, four flats in the key signature of F minor, that was considered to be not the kindest key. Beethoven had no interest in composing music for the casual pianist. He was trying to compose music that was uncompromisingly his own and his personality. And here's the final movement from the Piano Sonata Number no. 1 by Beethoven. Dominic Cayley performs on the Grand Piano Series. <laughs>
The final movement from the Piano Sonata Op. 2, No. 1, by Beethoven. The pianist was Dominic Cayley. Mr. Cayley attended the Juilliard School before studying at Yale, and most recently the Colburn School. At just 26 years of age, he's already enjoying an impressive international career. When away from the piano, he devotes time to challenging his mind and body in other ways, notably triathlons and Ironman competitions. That's something that I do uh, with frequency. I'm actually in about five days, I'm competing in Waco uh, half Ironman race on Sunday. I'm not terribly competitive, I'm not a professional, but it's fun to push myself physically and mentally. Um, because in some ways I feel like there's a lot of correlation between the physicality and a little bit of athleticism to, between the piano and being active outside. Musicians are fine motor athletes. Uh, we use our muscles and honestly in the same ways that professional athletes do. We, we, we just simply use very tiny muscles in our forearms that need the same amount of attention, care, stretching, uh, massaging that any uh, pro athlete would take. In Beethoven's second piano sonata, the dance movement is changed from a minuet and trio to a scherzo, the first use of that term in this body of work. Let's hear that movement now as performed by Dominic Cayley from the Grand Piano Series. The Scherzo from the Piano Sonata No. 2 by Beethoven. The performance was recorded on October 22, 2019, kicking off Beethoven 2020 at the Grand Piano Series. We'll enjoy all 32 of the numbered sonatas over the course of the next two seasons. Beethoven rounds out his Opus 2 Piano Sonatas with a big four-movement work in C major. The sonata is among Beethoven's longest, and it's a virtuoso showpiece. It no doubt challenged the instruments available to the composer at that time, but it's executed beautifully on the Fazioli F308. But, for all its bravura, the real highlight of this work is the gorgeous adagio. Here with more is Dominic Cayley. In these pieces, you really see them, particularly the third sonata, Beethoven was writing this music for himself. He played the third sonata more than any other piece that he ever wrote. He played the sonata everywhere. Because of its technical demands, it sort of set him apart from any other musician at the time. Uh, Mozart, Haydn, nobody was writing anything as virtuosic as this sonata. And Beethoven wrote his very favorite technical devices, which are double thirds, triple trills, chords up and down the keyboard that are quite thick. These are things that Beethoven himself was quite good at. And he presented them to the public to both show off, but also basically um, show things that the piano could do that honestly had not been heard before. And let's listen. Thank you. 
Adagio from the Piano Sonata No. 3 by Beethoven. The pianist was Dominic Cayley, as recorded by yours truly for the Grand Piano Series in Naples, Florida. Mr. Cayley's program concluded with the Piano Sonata No. 4, or Grand Piano Sonata, by Beethoven. This piece was composed just a few years after the Opus 2 set. Beethoven was continuing to work and perform in Vienna at that time, and his star was rising. In addition to this piece, he also produced the Serenade for String Trio and a few other short works. We don't know much about what Beethoven did the rest of that year, but many surmise that he suffered a long period of illness, and that it was about this time that his hearing began to diminish. The Grand Sonata is, as the name would imply, big and bold in every way. Once again, Dominic Cayley. When you're playing this music, a lot of composers at the time would write pieces that the average listener could open up and kind of sight right at the piano. But Beethoven, again, he was writing music that demands a lot from the performer. And even from the first note to the first sonata, you feel like you're getting thrown into this uh, almost like a war of sorts <laughs> where Beethoven is, is making his stand. And he is triumphant, certainly. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was the finale to the Piano Sonata No. 4 by Beethoven, the so-called Grand Sonata, bringing this podcast to a close. Once again, we'd like to thank the Brooks and Joanne Fortune Family Foundation, as well as Charles Marshall and Richard Took. You can learn more about the Grand Piano Series when you visit www.grandpianoseries.org. There you'll find information on upcoming concerts, auditions for the series, and underwriting opportunities. Once again, that address is www.grandpianoseries.org. Milana Strezeva is the co-founder and artistic director of the Grand Piano Series with Raniero Tazzi. And for now, until next time, this is Mark Travis wishing you good health and good music. Thanks for listening.